Okay, so I was tasked with having to make some wallets for one of my clients, Carolina Shoes, and I wanted to come up with an interesting concept. And considering the snow everywhere on the ground, I was walking one day in my Carolina boots, and I had a brainstorm. Let me make shoe prints in the leather, just like it might look like snow. So what you're looking at here, this is a piece of Corian. This is the hard surface countertop material. I am engraving shoe prints, my logo, and my little branding man on this three-part wallet. And with Corian, it creates a, a fine powder that you have to kind of do a little bit of work to get it scrubbed out of there. And considering I'm doing an impression, I want to make sure that all the material is nice and clean. And also, the fact that I was walking on the snow gave me a brainstorm. I wanted to have a texture of snow, so I just said maybe the background will be a little pixelated, pointillated, because a laser doesn't give you a cut flat bottom, just like a, like a CNC would. And by the way, here you see me cutting out all the various parts. The funny thing is, is I thought I had enough for 100 wallets, but I made 25. When you laser cut, Veg tan, I'm using veg tan, it's about six ounce veg tan. You get a burnt edge, so I am scraping off that burnt edge. I know I'm going to dye these wallets, but it's really important to get rid of that because it just creates a lot of dirt and dust. So I do the best I can to get rid of as much of it as possible. In the past, I've laser cut some stuff, and in the summertime when it was nice and warm, and I wash it all in a bucket and then I let the leather dry, I get rid of all that charred edge, but that wasn't necessary in this case. Now I'm going to need to locate these parts on the die stamps, and so I just use some negative cutouts and glue it onto the Corian. You could have used 3D printing. I've offered these files up to some of the fans, and they're going to try and 3D print these parts. You could also obviously see and see them into wood or acrylic, laser cut into acrylic. Now this is a fly press or a screw press it creates several hundred pounds of pressure in the downward direction with that big coarse screw and those big fly fly weights and there's the first impression i did wet the leather it allows it to take a much deeper precise impression and again the bottom of the die creates a little bit of a pixelated texture which almost imitates snow and so now i'm just going through the process wetting each one making sure that I get my graphic located correctly and you could see time passing you could see how much detail I'm able to get in this impression with the Carolina shoe logo showing up which probably was three-eighths of an inch across maybe a half inch of an inch across and I'm using this fancy old antique screw press machine but you could use a vise you could even use some weight you could figure out, a, if you guys know what a tortilla maker is, you could figure out some sort of mechanical action lever with wood, get a very similar impression. You just need to create a lot of force. You could even use a hammer, but I wouldn't use it on this Corian dies, you would break them. But you just gotta figure out a way to compress into that leather. And I used some black, it seemed like a black veg tan, but it didn't take as deep of an impression, but it still worked. Now this is a skiving machine and what it does is it has a bell-shaped knife which rotates and it cuts. Now I had my my adjustments at least for this particular shot weren't great. I shouldn't be getting that burning but I eventually did get much cleaner cut. And I skived the edges of two of the pieces to bring them all together so I didn't have a full thick stack of leather at this edge of the wallet. Technically probably could have used slightly thinner leather but it worked out fine. Now, what I'm doing here is using PVA glue to hold my parts together, and I just have these tiny little squeeze clamps to keep everything together. You could also use clothespins. Actually, might have been better because clothespins wouldn't leave an impression. But I try to make sure that those grabs right on the stitch line, which I put into the die just as a guide for myself. And now, after the glue dried with the squeeze clamps, I put them in this bigger die just to make sure that it flattened out that seam. So I got the glue tacky to the point where it would stay together and then I left it in this jig for the final dry for about another 20 minutes. 
and you'll see how the wallets are all nice and flat there in the tin tray. Now this is a the Weaver 303 walking foot. This is a great machine. You're not going to be stitching bridle with this. So this is a nice in-between machine. And this is just about at the limits for these three layers, but it worked. It worked fine. It was kind of thumping a little bit through the stitch, but it worked fine. It didn't have any problems with the back stitch. didn't have any problems with the bottom stitch. And as I say, often you always go to school on the first few. Having a hard time figuring out what to use as my visual guide. This might have been the fifth or sixth one I'm stitching. And I'm making absolutely extra sure that I'm staying right in that little line. I could try and be a cowboy and make that turn fast, but it's not necessary. I just got my hand on the wheel, the advanced wheel on the outside right of the machine, just so I could assist in the braking and control. And there you have it. Now I just got to do 30 of those. I did make about 30 wallets all in. This is by far my favorite sewing machine that I've ever used. It is flawless in its effort. It never jams. It never gets snarled up. And it just is so powerful for leather and vinyl. This summer we did a bunch of vinyl work on it. You'll see it in an upcoming TV series we're doing. And it just works flawlessly. And it has an adjustable variable speed uh, stepper motor. So you don't have that crazy hum of this machines of, of yesteryear where it's a clutch machine. It's absolutely silent until you step on the pedal and you could adjust how fast you're feeding. Just using a torch here to melt back that nylon thread. You've got to be careful though, you don't want to burn the material. And I'm using my Ameribraid 2x72 grinder. But you'll see a great machine toward the end of the video that Weaver supplies. And I just didn't have it in my studio at the time. It's over out at Taylor's studio. Now I'm just hammering the stitch down. And I'm just using a Japanese chisel hammer there. And uh, that just flattens out the stitching. And now this is a good way to get into the dye bottles and to save yourself a little bit of time and energy with your brushes, your foam brushes. Now... It's really important to do some experiments with these dyes because they go down one color, dry a completely different color, and then when you add a top coat, they turn a completely third different color. So it's really important to do some samples. In my case, I'm obviously making a variety of wallets, so I'm not overly concerned, but I just have a little bit of experience from doing my leather journals last year. And I had contemplated dyeing all these before I sewed them together, but then I was like, you know what, it doesn't matter because I was afraid to get the dye on the inside. I pinched each wallet open and I painted a little bit down the front. Certainly the outer pocket, I squeezed it open. And in the social media, a few people were curious if the wallets had been filled with anything. But now that they have the dye soaking through them, the leather is more pliable. So I puckered them open so that when they dried, they were at least puckered open a little bit. So if you're going to stick your money or whatever in there, you give a, it's the beginning of breaking the wallet in. You'll notice some of the dye concentrated because I kind of stood them up. And so you'll see it kind of concentrated like this. But, you know, you live and learn. And these wallets are going to get beat up. So I'm not, I'm not uh, all that bent about it. But it is something to consider next time I do one or two pieces. I want to make sure that I evenly apply that. And I don't let it pull up in one corner to get a stain. Now I'm just using the top coat, which is really nice. It gives you a little bit of a shiny finish. I'm really looking forward to seeing what these wallets are going to look like. There it is. There's the the sander burnisher from Weaver. Now I'm over at Taylor Studio, just burnishing the edge of each one of the wallets. And you can see it has a sander on one side and a burnisher on the other. And then I give a little dark brown edge coat to each wallet, even the black, because it's almost the same color as black. Now these are all my finish. You see that footprint, which is uh, nice and prominent. Nice branding for Carolina shoes. And now this is my everyday carry. It's kind of being a little bit silly, but you can see a project I did last year, which is that sheath with a little bit of wet form for the outer knife and my inner knife. And there's the wallet. Thank you, Weaver, and thank you for watching. I hope you got inspired by this video. And I'll see you soon.